One of the things that people talked about is imagining your future self. Say, this is where we want to be. And as leaders, as CEOs, where do we want to get to? And being able to sort of paint that vision of where we want to get to and then sort of rallying the organization to get there. You have an idea, let's go try it. Let's get something up and, and done quickly. Let's go show it to prospective customers. See if we get buy-in in these things. So, so, you know, do it quickly, small bites, fail quickly. Or go to your weakness, right? We all talk about the strength, but do you go out and talk to your lost customers or the lost prospects, right, and sort of find out what, what it is that, uh, you know, why didn't they buy from you? In order to create this culture of innovation, it really has to be from the top down. You have to, you can't just say in your mission statement that we want to innovate. You really have to support the idea and create that sort of environment of support. A couple observations. Uh, in general, the CEOs, including myself, um, I think need to come up the curve a lot on the capabilities of use, using social in different categories. Pretty much social is being used a lot by a lot of companies for presence. So putting presence out there to make sure that you're just there and you put content so that people see you. That's sort of the level one that I think came out of a lot of the sessions. So it's really a push strategy. Uh, we happen to have about 15% of our leads right now are literally coming from the use of social and that's using a content-based strategy and outbound using things like LinkedIn, et cetera. There was some discussion of both just advertising, but also using content-driven articles. And the ability to measure the return on that, um, incredibly rich. So you can really profile where in content people go. So using social as a direct lead generation activity, that would be one area that I think we could look to capitalize on. This is a revolution that's happening, and we have to capitalize and take advantage of it. All of this was about, I would say, the metabolism of digital when you're trying to present yourself to the market and sell things. There is so much on the uh, internet. So how do you break through this speed of bias, of preconception? Despite all the digital glory and all that great, they just come. Um, you still need to reach out and touch folks and you need to find the practitioners. So if you can find the practitioners digitally, that's super but that's not a reason to not also go out and do a lot of events. So marketing needs to nurture, 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 and sales reps need to go find the use case and outcome that needs to be done uh, in order to sell something. And I sort of did a top 10 list um, as I was listening to different points of view in honor of uh, Letterman's uh, last uh, hurrah. So it's not funny, but I think it's some good stuff. The numbers don't speak for themselves. The business won't sell itself. Um, and I think a lot of times you fall in that trap just because you're performing really well, people understand the strategic value. Don't underestimate the distraction and the time it takes to do an exit or a financing round. A team, is your team prepared and ready and is the right team to deliver whatever you're doing? Your job actually in meeting one and two is just get them to like you. You know, forget about sort of, and I sort of in fundraising, it's sort of the same thing, like I'm selling people too, right? My goal of meeting one is get a second meeting. Tactical valuation guidance, everyone asks for it. There are good bankers and good ways of delivering it. Act like you've been there before, um, which is kind of interesting because a lot of you haven't. Have enough preparation that, that you don't look like a novice and you're not tripping over yourself to answer questions. You cannot make decisions fast enough. That doesn't matter whether it's this topic or any of the topics we talked about. That's just the fact of life. No breath is better than bad breath. For those who haven't heard me use that one before, I stole it from someone, I can't remember who, but it does apply. Let the bankers do their job. As founders and CEOs, we're control freaks, and not only that, it's our baby, and not only that, it might be our net worth, a huge percentage of it. So it's really hard to let the banker do their thing. And then, and then the last, um, and I said it earlier, but whatever process it is, exit or, or, or financing, have a process that has a beginning and an end. You know, there was the watershed event. Uh, the way that we see it in the industry was the target CEO getting whacked for the cyber breach. And Everyone now is thinking, I don't want that to be me. The whole uh, threat landscape has, um, has, has sort of changed uh, to target a lot of mid-sized enterprises. The, I call the clear and present danger of means, motive, and opportunity, and it's really quick for 
Uh, some, you know, non-cyber criminal will become one. None of this technology or, or services are perfect and, um, and that uh, you've got to continue to, as, as the bad guys are changing their game, you've got to continue to change your game. Security concerns by customers, uh, which in, in this, you know, the regulated ones in particular, uh, but all in general, are slowing down the sales process. Be proactive and make it everybody, it's got to be cultural, it's got to be a security concern. One of the things that we find most fascinating going to our customers is the the, um, the password of the CEO who tends to have the most access to the most important information is the company's name and in lowercase and or you know that sort of thing uh, one two three four we see this all the time and these are you know in, in a lot of the finance sector guys you know, managing 10 or 20 billion of assets with trading floors it, it gets it's mind-boggling so don't let that be you and I would say lead by example and um, and make it part of your culture 